live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Nick Strawn. Disney meets Spike Lee, right? Best friends CJ and Sebastian build a pair of time machines and use them in order to save their life for their CJ's brother. <sighs> That's about how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I, I actually, um, I, I, I like know, some things about this, some things I didn't like. Yeah, I have to tell you, I'm very this mixed. Was t- t- yeah, it I have was, mixed feelings it was, about it. It was really mixed, but you know what? At the same time, it was interesting. It was kind of different. It kept my interest. It it was an independent feel, like it almost felt like a like an independent Disney movie kind you, of. You a, know what it? You know what I had? It, it it was like a very very colorful after school special. Yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I it it didn't seem. It wasn't. It wasn't a sci fi movie. It wasn't really. very stylistic. It was a character done. movie. It was. It was. It was, yeah. it was more about the story, about the message behind it. it really, was all about right. Right. What's going on in certain neighborhoods and stuff. Right. Basically, that's what it came down to. Yeah. It, it was. Uh, it was about relationships more than anything. I thought. Yeah, it was. It was about. Yeah. It was about relationships, and it was about you know what you do for family and friends. Yeah, and the uh, sci-fi stuff was just kind of corny, but. I kind of enjoyed it. Like I, I like the tubes sticking out of the backpacks and the, you know, yeah, just the, there was some, the very basic. Well, uh, it was, you know, it was camp and colorful. Yeah. Uh, it reminded me of some of uh, Spike Lee's early uh, look. Uh, in fact, in particular, she got to have it. And uh, oh yeah, who was yeah. the one on the block? Crooklyn. So that's what you're talking about. You're talking about Crooklyn, or are you talking about? Um, that was actually one of. the his movies I liked was Crooklyn because I like the music a lot but yeah but no the the one that was uh, it was in a in a block uh, there was a, a battle kind of oh you're talking about do the right thing do the right thing yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. really had the same look as do the right thing right yeah you know it was kind of a, a cleaned up uh, what's really sad about this though is that we're talking about do the right thing that was like 1991 right, or something. Right, right. Exactly. And this is basically the exact same message and it's like 2019. Yeah. And it's just no, really it's, sad it's to true. think about. It is sad. Uh, I like the main, I like the girl, CJ, the girl who played CJ, Eden Duncan Smith. I thought she did an amazing job. And then Dante was a pretty good character too. Yeah, yeah. No, Dante, uh, I, I, I just have to say well, Sebastian that Sebastian was the character. Yeah, yeah, seeing Michael Fox was kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of, kind the Back of, to the Future reference yeah, was back, awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> it was really good. And he was like one of the teachers, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of surprised to see him because I was like getting into this like, okay, it's kind of a low budget, kind of independent kind of thing. Yeah. And then he shows up. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like, well, <clears throat> Spike Lee, come on, you know, yeah. executive executive produced by Spike Lee, right? Uh, I. You know what? I have to say, in a certain way, I could analyze it uh, just as much as uh, I could analyze myself into not liking it. But I liked it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It was not a great movie, but it was... It was kind of pretty. I think you used the right word, campy. It was kind of... Yeah, it was was campy. The guy in the alley. Yeah. Rastafarian kind of thing that you know where he was listening yeah, well, to music. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying is yeah. the humor was the humor was definitely very much uh, after school special. Uh, it was like uh, after school special with the f bomb everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the one thing I was wondering about this movie was it's uh, it wasn't really a kids movie. Yeah, <laughs> but was, who was it? Who was the audience supposed to be? That's what I'm well, questioning. That, that, you know what? Because it wasn't that's, necessarily me. But, but that's kind of what I was wondering. It, it, it was, yeah. Maybe it's no. A, you're absolutely right. I I kept thinking about that as as it the was film a was Netflix going produced, along. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's maybe. I guess it's, it's maybe it's a general audience. Like maybe it's yeah, who no, no, no. People it's who wouldn't watch a Spike Lee movie, right? That want to, that need this message. Maybe that's kind of what I'm thinking. Right. Maybe right. that's what they intended. I, I, you know, it was. Kind of a a, a tween, yeah. Y- y- yeah. Y- you know, a tween. 
it had a feel to it. I still liked it though. I mean, yeah. I shouldn't have. I absolutely I, shouldn't have. I've, I'm still kind of iffy on it, but yeah, well, I think I'm, I, I think I'd give it average rating probably. I'm, you know. Let me see if I can bring some some specifics in. Enlighten me, because maybe that'll affect my. Um, <laughs> a lot of superhero landings here, I might add. Um, uh, the ending was very interesting. Well, did you like it? How it ended? <laughs> it was a little. Did strange. I like it? Hmm. Um, I did. I liked it a lot. You know, because the ending was nowhere near as pat mm -hmm. or uh, predictable as you would have thought. You know, uh, it, it, and the thing is, is the ending kind of left it yeah, complicated. You know what I mean? I <laughs> Pretty mean, complicated. I mean, yeah. there was something there was something about it where it had that after school special complications to it that. You can discuss in class the next day? Exactly, that kind of thing. But here's the thing, is then it didn't tie anything up at no, all. It no. just left it out there, and it did it intentionally. And there was something about that that kind of gave you this, like, uh, well, they did, slice of life thing? They did kind of complete one story, was that there was a relationship between two characters that was kind of questionable at the beginning, but right, then right. it kind of brought them together. right. Yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed it for that, and and, and the thing is, is uh, I, I'm going to admit this is I'm a sucker for kind of a kind of a light. romantic yeah. light film. You yeah. know, I, I I'm always uh, the romantic light films are not done as often anymore, I, and I don't mean Hallmark. Yeah. See, yeah. now here's the thing: is doing a film like this and not becoming a Hallmark movie. <laughs> It's difficult, probably. It's, it's difficult <laughs> yeah. these days. Yeah, it's very yeah. difficult. And, and and I appreciate, you know, attempts to do that. And and yeah, this and, is more about family. And I like the characters. Yeah, uh, there are some strong characters in this. Yeah, and, and and to a certain extent, you know, they remember when I said that whenever I I was doing uh, like Mantis, mm -hmm. and we were doing like graffiti, and I said, and the way that I got around, you know, having graffiti all over the film was literally by just co color covering over in patches, mm -hmm. right? So that you saw these patches that reminded you of graffiti everywhere, but they didn't have to be bad production graffiti, and they didn't have to be actual streetwise graffiti. And this kind of did that with characters. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, there was, there was like, the idea of gang presence mm -hmm. that without ever bringing up the gang word. Right. You know? This wasn't colors. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't oh, colors. Or, uh, <laughs> or New Jack City or whatever. Yeah, it was it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a kind of a um I didn't want to say Cosby-ish because it no, definitely actually, no, that's actually not a bad analogy, really. There was I mean, well, certain... before the rape and the all the other stuff, yeah. the Cosby stuff, <laughs> that I remember as a child, it kind of had that feel to it, Yeah, definitely, with yeah. like the message and yeah. not yeah. necessarily a dad making a speech, but like the conversations they were having. And yeah. It, and, and I it, like that it was real. Like the way they talked was, there was realistic. There, there was something about it that was re realistic and, and, and it wasn't like everybody, it wasn't like the streetwise people were super streetwise or the scientist people were super scientists or, or <laughs> right. any of the rest of yeah. that it, it was like everybody kind of talked you know like they should have in a, in a way and that's yeah. one thing that's different than do the right thing because do the right thing had like over the top characters well yeah that, that was almost yeah. like uh, like radio uh, rahim right right <laughs> almost the, the dj well, almost that was almost like a like david mamet yeah. play only done you know yeah. by spike lee <laughs> if spike lee was doing david mamet yeah, that's that's exactly what that would have been of course that is kind of spike lee's mo is to be yeah yeah over the uh, top with his characters yeah mookie <laughs> anyway um <laughs> i'm thinking of like you know spike lee when he plays his characters alone are definitely over the top i think but there you go i don't know um, i liked it i guess i i i still kind of in the middle of the road like yeah, i could probably yeah, eh, yeah i wasn't overly excited but i was i was interested the whole so time so where would you where would you rate this little sucker Hmm. Hmm. 
It was above average. 2.8. That's funny. I was going to say 2.9. I, I, I meant 2.9. You know, I, 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 I did kind of like it. Yeah, um, it, it was it was very fluffy and and, <laughs> and I fluffy. really but I really liked the ending. I, I, I like the ability to just kind of a certain extent just go ah yeah life is yeah. continuing and this is what it's going to be right yeah yeah there's, there's something really cool about I like that. how there's like they kind of stopped really doing for a while there was like no sci-fi at all like no. <laughs> but they were getting into the characters at that point yeah, and I yeah, didn't care yeah. I was like oh okay right, yeah you know yeah it's, it's and the sci-fi stuff was just kind of fun like yeah kind of it was a plot device really is what it was it, it was it was a plot yeah. device so yeah. um, it's worth watching if you want a little break from horror movies or dark sci-fi stuff yeah it is light sci-fi sci-fi yeah. light so I, um, uh, there's there's another film out called um Boy, my wife just starts with a P. Anyway, it's on, it's it's on Netflix. We're gonna have to check it out. Uh, just it, any film that starts with a P. Uh, it's horror, sad because horror the film. first two words that pop my head are bad words. Okay, <laughs> not those words specifically. Specifically, not those words. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, evidently. Uh, I'm going to be doing another podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me this about is, this. Yeah. This is a, You're spreading yourself a little thin. Well. You're going to yeah, start sucking no, more. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing, I'm not doing the one with Scott Paulson anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, I just, we, we, we just agreed to, um, he's getting really busy and, and that's, I have to admit good. that I kind of completely ignored him as we went through the vengeance vengeance sort of put, put, the, put a kill that sucker. Uh, but I, I have another one, um, coming up. It's going to be called rabbit hole. I'm definitely going to listen to it. Cause, uh, yeah, I, I like the concept. Yeah. The con, the concept is, is, is uh, I, I describe it to you and I'll describe well, it. To we're on a podcast else. talking about a podcast. A podcast. <laughs> uh, this is a podcast, uh, about uh, the thing inside of the thing inside of the thing. Yeah. Huh. And, and, um, you know, whatever that means to you, uh, <laughs> you're going to find out what it means to me. Yes. So, yes. uh, that's vengeance trailer is out. Look at all these things that are happening. All these, uh, you know, uh, here, 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 uh, it, it looks amazing. I mean, if you look at the trailer, you'll understand why we were so excited about it. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, and uh, both of us, I got, all, I got all tingly it. watching it, which is a good thing. Usually in your loins, not tingly. Like I'm having a stroke, but tingly, like I'm excited. Not okay. in a sexual way. No, not in a sexual way. Okay, but okay. I tingly was because tingly. you know I'm all tingly. on Twitter because I got to see it. T- a Twitter? Wow, uh, a Twitter painted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, yep, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 I was trying to do Kevin Nealon, sorry. I don't know. It's kind of a weird reference, but... Yep. Thanks for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review Podcast. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, follow us, and, of course, like us. We can be found on Podbean, which is an amazing app, YouTube, Stitcher, Alexa on any pod, iTunes, Google Play, we're on Twitter as well, at DW Review, and of course Facebook, you can find us there. You can also email us at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com.